psychological horror visions, bizarre hallucinations, or something else. Jacob's Ladder explained. Where does Jacob's Ladder lead to? It's not just another unusual horror movie. It's better if we label it as a psychological, philosophical thriller. The film, produced by Carol Co. Pictures, was written by Bruce Joel Rubin and directed by Adrian Lin. Carol Co. Pictures can be tracked back to the production of blockbusters like Terminator 2, Judgment Day, Total Recall, and Basic Instinct. This is the story of Jacob Singer, who was severely injured in the Vietnam War back in the early 1970s. Jacob Jacob presently lives with his wife Jezebel. After divorcing his wife, suddenly unexplained and bizarre experiences started occurring in his life, and he was totally unaware of what was happening around him. The legacy of the film surpasses the mediocre box office results. The film, coming from an Oscar-nominated director, was probably unexpectedly different for the audience. The influence of Jacob's Ladder can be noted in Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan, The Jacket by Adrian Brody, and the Silent Hill video game series, and many other movies. Movies. The script comes from Rubin, who has already received an Oscar award for Ghost in 1990. It is rumored that Rubin had departed on a spiritual quest and spent several years meditating in Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, and many other countries. He referred to the Tibetan Book of the Dead, Bardo Thodol, as the primary source of inspiration for the film. Another influence on the script was his dream in his early 80s, where he dreamt about getting trapped in a subway. You'll be surprised to know that actors like Richard Gere, Dustin Hoffman, and Al Pacino were keen for the titular role, while Jennifer Lopez, Madonna, Demi Moore, and Julia Roberts were auditioned for the character of Jesse. Ultimately, it was Tim Robbins and Elizabeth Pina who grasped the role. If you have already watched the movie, then I don't have much to add, but if you were intrigued to watch the film, then stop! Watch the film and then watch this video. Otherwise, this video would be a total spoiler. Many people have confessed that they didn't understand the film after watching it the first time. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. What is wrong with Jacob Singer's life? Jacob's Ladder released in 1990. The movie commenced in Mekong Delta, Vietnam on 6 October 1971, where the American infantrymen, including Jacob Singer, were engaged in war. They had just finished their food when there was an unexpected attack on their unit. As the soldiers prepared to face their enemy, suddenly, many of them started behaving abnormally, with convulsions, seizures, and other symptoms. As Jacob escaped through the jungle, he was abruptly stabbed by someone. Jacob Jacob woke up in the New York City subway where his co-passengers were strange. He got down in a station, but to his surprise, the station was locked and there was no exit. Jacob tried to cross the line when he was almost run over by a train. And inside the train, he saw strange demonic people. It was the year 1975 when Jacob was a clerk in the post office where he lived with his girlfriend Jezebel in an apartment in Brooklyn after his divorce. He missed his family though, especially his son Gabe, who had died in an accident. His flashbacks were went back to his struggle in the jungle after being injured. Trying to find some help to save himself, his injuries from the war were treated by his chiropractic friend, Louis, who was like an angel to Jacob. Yet Jacob kept on seeing the demonic people, faceless vibrating figures, and when he almost was hit by a car. On that note, in the original script, the demonic figures in Jacob's hallucinations were supposed to be from the Bible, but Lynn decided to make them human for more terrifying effects. After getting saved from the accident, Jacob tried to meet his regular doctor, but there is no record. I'm sorry, but uh, there's no record of a Jacob Singer in our family. Of him or his doctor. Later, he was informed that his doctor died in a car explosion. Soon, he went to a party where he met a fortune teller who studied his palm and said, according to his lifeline, he was already dead. He started to enjoy the party, but he was again being haunted by demonic faces, and this time he saw his girlfriend enjoying intercourse with a monster. He was so terrified that he screamed and fainted. He woke up with a high fever, a temperature as high as 106 degrees. Jezebel called in all of the neighbors, and together they put him in a bathtub with lots of ice, and he became unconscious once again. This time, he opened his eyes to find himself in bed with his wife, Sarah. He told her about his nightmares and that he was living with his co-worker, Jezebel. They were interrupted by Gabe, who wanted his father to put him to sleep. As he put his son to bed and went back to sleep, he got glimpses of the scenes where the American soldiers rescued him in a helicopter. And as he opened his eyes, he found himself in the 
bathtub while the doctor examined him. Eventually, Jacob was contacted by his friend Paul, who was in the same army unit as he was. He revealed that he also was seeing demons everywhere and was having horrible experiences. Soon, he was killed in a car explosion. Jacob met other friends from his platoon at Paul's funeral, and everyone confessed that they were having similar experiences and hallucinations. They believed that the army was hiding something from them, and they hired a lawyer to investigate. Shockingly, the lawyer didn't take the case as he found that Jacob and his friends never went to war in Vietnam, while Jacob's friend also backed out from the case. Outside the court, Jacob was abducted by some suited men, but after putting up a lot of fight, Jacob managed to jump in the car. He was severely injured and landed in a hospital. The hospital was a nightmare as it appeared like hell to him. They told him that he was dead, and the hospital was his present home as the demonic people started his treatment. Soon after, Jacob was found lying in the hospital cabin, where his wife and children visited him. He begged for help, but a voice whispered, Dream on. Dream on. He was lying helplessly in the cabin when all of a sudden, Lewis appeared and took him out of the hospital to his chamber. As Jacob conversed with Lewis, he pronounced the most important quotes of the Christian mystic Meister Eckhart. The only thing that burns in hell is the part of you that won't let go of life. The only thing that burns in hell is the part of you that won't let go of your life. Your memories, your attachments, they burn them all away. But they're not punishing you, they're freeing your soul. But they're not punishing you, he said. They're freeing your soul. So if you're frightened of dying and you're holding on, you'll see devils tearing your life away. But if you made your peace and the devils are really angels freeing you from the earth, Jacob was approached by a person named Michael Newman, who introduced himself as a chemist with the Army Chemicals Warfare Division. He revealed that he had prepared an experimental drug called Ladder, which would increase soldiers' aggression as the Army heads believed that the new soldiers were too soft to handle enemies in war. He also revealed that a small dose of the drug was secretly mixed with the soldier's food in Jacob's unit, turning the soldiers so aggressive that they started killing themselves rather than the enemies due to the effect of the drug. The facts helped Jacob remember that he was stabbed by none other than another fellow American soldier and not by an enemy. Jacob, tired and devastated, returned to his family residence where he sat on the sofa for the entire night and remembered the quotes of Lewis. He met Gabe on the staircase in the morning, who held his hand and climbed up the stairs towards the bright light. The scene was taken back to 1971, where the military doctors declared Jacob Singer dead. They discussed that he had put up a tremendous fight for life, but he appeared peaceful in death. The storyline oscillated between New York and Vietnam as the audience lost track between dreams, reality, and and flashbacks. We will discuss the explanation in the next section. The film marked a turning point in the Tim Robbins career, who till that had performed comedy in supporting roles. He played the role with breathtaking excellence, combining emotions of horror, perplexity, and sadness. Elizabeth Pina was fantastic too, with her fluctuating between sensuality, kindness, and a dominating nature. The original script's ending was totally different from that of the final outcome. Jacob was supposed to fight with demonic Jezebel before reaching heaven, and due to conflict over the conclusion, Paramount Pictures backed out from the production before Carol Co. Pictures stepped in, offering $25 million without any interference in Lynn's creativity. Another distinguishing factor of Jacob's ladder was a special effect. All the special effects had been attained on the very day of their shots. There are no CGI or post-production effects posed on the film. Jacob's fragmentary visions and bizarre hallucinations explained. Some films are not for fun. They invoke our thought process about the unanswered questions of life and death. The title, Jacob's Ladder, itself signifies Jacob standing in the middle of a ladder, like the one that God had put down for the biblical patriarch Jacob to reach heaven in the book of Genesis. Similarly, Jacob's singer seemed to be stuck between life and death, where one end leads to heaven, while the other end leads to hallucinations from an unknown drug. There are numerous theories on the transition from life to death. Few ideas are worth mentioning here that relate to this film. First, the people who came back from their deathbed have often described a tunnel through which they seem to have traveled. It is possible that the vision of the tunnel in the case of Jacob had been the New York subway tunnel. Moreover, the tunnel was closed, which probably signified that his soul was not ready to leave the world. There are theories that the soul doesn't want to leave the body and keeps trying to enter the body. It might be the possible reason why Jacob 
Jacob's soul kept returning, and we could see his injured body struggling to stay alive. Even the doctors at the end stated that he had put on a tough fight to stay alive. The question pops up in many viewers' minds whether the film is a flashback or a flash forward. I think that the scenes presented to us as flashbacks were actually present time, and the entire film was his sole search for the truth of his life, the accounts of his karma. There is no hide and seek with your karma. The very existence of Jezebel and the demons probably represented his dark desires, which he wanted to fulfill in his life. We know that Jezebel was his colleague from work. There is no scope for us to know whether they had an affair or whether it was Jacob's one-sided infatuation. But his life with Jezebel always made him agitated and angry. At the time when he was in the height of pain, he remembered his wife and children. His family and home had always been his comfort zone, that is for sure. We hear him tell his wife that he had a nightmare of living with Jezebel who was very good in bed as they laughed together. He cherished every moment he spent with his sons, especially Gabe, whose thoughts always brought tears to his eyes. On the other hand, his soul was always searching for the truth. He knew that something was not right about that day, and the fact that his fellow American soldier stabbed him confirmed that there was something mysterious about the entire incident. Probably all the soldiers of his unit and the chemist Newman were responsible for the drug ladder were all dead. Together, all the soldiers were hunting for the truth behind their deaths. Jacob was determined to reveal the secret of the army. Without knowing the truth, he was not ready to leave this planet. That might be the reason his soul met Newman's soul, to uncover the truth. Throughout the film, we see that many incidences threaten his life or try to convince him in whatever way that he is no longer alive. Is it just another way to convince his soul that the time has come for him to leave earthly bonds? In the book Many Lives, Many Masters, Brian Weiss states the angels come to help the confused or stubborn souls to guide their way to heaven. Lewis was one such angel trying to help Jacob realize that demons and angels are helping him free his soul from all the memories or desires that are holding him back to the human world. Thus, we see that after his soul went through the scrutiny of his karmic life, his earnest desires, his happiness, his sadness, and his search for the truth has finally met the person he loved the most. It was Gabe's soul as his angel. When Gabe held his hand and guided the way, Jacob was finally ready for departure to heaven. The doctors in Vietnam declared him dead as he appeared peaceful in his death. Many people People might also think that the entire film depicted the drug-induced hallucinations of a dying man while the scenes were illusions of his subconscious mind. A note at the end displayed, it was reported that the hallucinogenic drug BZ was used on the soldiers in the Vietnam War, but the Pentagon denied it. If everything was an illusion, then how did he become aware of the drug used? Was it just another illusion of the subconscious mind? Believe what you want to. The remake of Jacob's Ladder released in 2019 compared to the original. In 2019, a new version of Jacob's Ladder was released with a similar plot but different characters and situations. This film was written by Jeff Bueller and Sarah Thorpe while David M. Rosenthal directed it. According to this movie, Jacob Singer returned home from Afghanistan. Everything seemed well for him apart from a few PTSD kind of flashbacks. The storyline focused on his brother Isaac, who had died in Afghanistan according to Jacob's knowledge. But Jacob found him alive, living in Atlanta. In this story, Jacob felt that he was losing touch with reality and it was something more complex than PTSD that he was suffering from. The twisted ending of the 2019 story reveals that he was actually living his brother's life. Isaac was married and had a baby while he was nearly dead in Afghanistan. He was struggling with severe PTSD aggravated by a new form of a drug called HDA. Through the former Jacob's Ladder, in a classic version that is beyond any comparison, the 2019 version has its own twists and turns, with relevant messages about PTSD and the treatment of veterans, which connects to the present day. The film doesn't deserve bad reviews. Being compared to its classic version, both the movies deserve the attention of the audience and compel us to think about life and death in a format beyond our imagination. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks. I'm working in a top secret lab synthesizing mind-altering drugs. Not the street stuff. They had us isolating.